Warning one, not all things are forbidden. Welcome to the first installment of the tale of my three months in Beijing. Back in 2007, I was given the opportunity to take a three-month vacation in Beijing. This was because of issues with my work in South Korea involving being between positions while still employed and also being between housing while still being contracted for housing. As it turns out, it was cheaper for them to fly me to Beijing and house me there than it was to find housing for me in Seoul. Anyway, as said, I was in Beijing for three months whilst being paid by the South Korean economy. What follows are descriptions and photos of my time there. I hope you'll enjoy these as much as I enjoyed those three months. Have fun! The flight to Beijing from Seoul, Incheon was via China Eastern. It was a short and pleasantly uneventful trip, and getting through immigration and customs was equally brief and even more pleasantly uneventful. I was in China, my first trip to this eastern giant. I was greeted by a friend who was there for a similar reason, and she took me to a Yunnanese restaurant nearby my apartment to be and ordered up a feast. We had pork back and vegetables, liberally spiced giant ribs, and a salad. Of course, it was a bacon salad. Now that's my kind of salad. Yunnan, by the way, is the southern Chinese province that borders on Myanmar, Laos, and Vietnam. My first night was spent in a hotel in the neighborhood of Guamao from which I had a view of multiple overlaid overpasses, along with a view of traditional Beijing smog. Ah, to immerse oneself in a culture. But, with only an hour's time difference to sleep off, the next morning I was off to test my ability with the Beijing subway system and find Tiananmen Square. Now, I'm not a political person, and so I will pass without comment about any events at this location. Also, I might want to go back again at some point, and I was just a dumb tourist anyway. The square is legitimately huge and entirely paved, not a blade of grass to be seen. Well, maybe a few. Smack dab in the center of it is Chairman Mao's mausoleum. Unfortunately, with the Olympics coming the next year, it was closed for restoration, so I was unable to enter and pay my respects. Across the street from Tiananmen is the Gate of Heavenly Peace, prominently adorned with a modest portrait of the aforementioned Chairman Mao Zedong. This was also the entrance to the Forbidden City. Enter, I did. Now, I've lived in South Korea for four years, so I am well aware that the Forbidden City is exactly the same as Yeonbukgung, the Imperial Palace in Seoul. This is true. It is also entirely false. They are the same, in their essence at least. But Gyeongbokgung is just a tiny scale model in comparison. The Forbidden City, or Palace Museum as it is now known, is on a scale and grandeur that mocks its Korean cousin. Unfortunately, my camera was momentarily, and unbeknownst to me, set in sepia tones for a while hence the less than dramatic shots I was able to get at first. Anyway, the Forbidden City is said to have 1,000 rooms. I certainly didn't see all of them, but it was a pleasant way to spend my first full day in Beijing. That's it for my first tale about life in Beijing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Also, please remember to subscribe and hit notifications. Lastly, any comments you have will be appreciated. Be well, be healthy, and be happy.